A warm welcome to everyone. I am Dr. Sachin Savi Morais from the Department of Sociology at Parvati Bai Chogle College, serving as an assistant professor for the last 14 years. Well, I'm a participant of the second online refresher course that is, so, uh, that is in social science that is being held at the UGC HRDC Center at Gujarat University in Ahmedabad. This is being scheduled between 16th August to the 29th of August. Today I'm here to present before you a very interesting topic and that's about the social inclusion of third gender in India. For centuries, the third gender have been a part and parcel of the culture or cultural ethos of India. And of late, we see that in the last century, the third gender lost its eminence and significance and as a result of which they have been a part of a marginalized community and therefore there is a need to include them as what we say if we embrace the other we progress together so i'm here to present before you and the varied facets of this aspect of third gender their social exclusion and the need for their inclusion. Hi, welcome back. So as stated in my introduction, let me take you to the brief outline of my presentation. As you know, the topic is social inclusion of third gender in India. And I've already introduced myself. The outline of my presentation will be, I would introduce you to this topic. I will talk to you about transgender and in India the key statistics. I will also present before you about the exclusion of third gender or what we sometimes refer to as a transgender and a need and a few positive steps for inclusions that have been taken so far will also be presented along with the concluding remarks and leave you with the references to which you would gain greater insights into this topic. So, as you see here, what can we expect? You as learners would definitely justify the need for the inclusion of third gender in India. You would be able to explain the varied exclusions faced by third gender, sometimes called transgender. And you will be also able to understand third gender and the varied aspects of their social exclusion and inclusion. So with this, let's move further and look at the term transgender. It's generally used to describe those who transgress social gender norms. And the word transgender is a term used to signify individuals who defy the rigid binary gender constructions. What does this mean? It means that when we are born into this world, we have a biological makeup. And usually when we are born into this world, that biological makeup presents to the world that we are either as male or female. And accordingly, the society prescribes certain roles and behaviors for the males and females. However, the given male or female may not always socialize into these or may not internalize into these. And that's the point of time when we say that there are people who express or present a breaking or a blurring of the culturally prevalent conventional gender roles. And this is what we call them as transgender people, or sometimes will be also referred to as in India with varied terms. We call them also as third gender. In India, there have been centuries old histories of existence of gender variant males who in the present times would have been labeled as transgender women. In India, people with a wide range of transgender related identities, cultures or experience existed, including hijras, 
as I said, they are called with different names like Hijras, Irvanis, Kotis, Joktas, Jogappas, and Shiv Shaktis. These have been referred, these names, in different states. It's not that pan Indian we refer to them as Hijras. They are called by different names based on their certain orientations. Though the word transgender is used, it is not a universal. But nevertheless, let's look at why the umbrella term transgender. The umbrella term which is used to describe the wide range of individualities and experiences which includes pre-operative, post-operative and non-operative transgender people but is still very complex. Now members of the transgender community have played a prominent role in Indian culture for 4,000 years and were once treated with great eminence and respect especially during the Mughal and the Hindu rulers times. They have also a mention in the great epics such as the Mahabharata and Ramayana. So why the downfall? Their fall from grace started in the 18th century during the British colonial rule when the Criminal Tribes Act of 1871 categorized the entire transgender community as criminals who were addicted to committing serious crimes. This takes us further to some important statistics on transgender. According to 2011 census, you see there are 4,87,803 people in India who have been identified as transgenders. And out of these, 54,854 are below six years. The maximum concentration of transgender is found in Maharashtra, and followed by Uttar Pradesh. Nevertheless, the second important state is Andhra Pradesh with a number two position at 9% followed by Madhya Pradesh and West Bengal and then the other states like Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Punjab, etc. Desires for the 2011 census. This takes us that what do transgender people involve with? And as you see, their literacy is very low because of which they have no much options. Secondly, because you have the social stigma attached to them, nobody is willing to employ them. And as a result of which, the most important occupation that they are involved with is prostitution. That's number one for which they make their ends meet and followed by begging and collecting of arms. At different occasions, you'll see them going around and collecting from people by giving them good wishes. Further, let's look at the idea of social exclusion of transgender. We see that the transgender people have been excluded in different ways. They have been socially excluded. Uh, that is the first point. They have also been economically excluded and also politically excluded. These points we will quickly go through in the next slide. So you see here, the social exclusion of transgender is actually a framework. And this framework helps us to look at transgender in a very comprehensive way as to what are the different uh, issues that the transgender people are facing. And these issues are broadly classified under these three different exclusions which are part of the social exclusion framework. And you see the social exclusion framework is increasingly used to highlight the issues and problems faced by disadvantaged and the disfranchised groups. First exclusion, exclusion from economic participation. You'll see that the hijras or transgender communities face a variety of social security issues. Since most of the hijras run away or are evicted from their homes because they never accepted the way they are, you find they do not expect support from their biological family. In the long run, subsequently, they face a lot of challenges such as lack of employment opportunities and therefore they turn to prostitutions as a means of their livelihood. This is exclusion from economic participation. Hardly any opportunities are found among the transgender. 
You see socio-cultural exclusion, exclusion from the family and society in general. The moment they are born, it's like a person born with a male body with a female soul or a female body with a male soul. So there are violations of human rights and they are also referred to as sexual minorities. The transgenders many a times are merely treated as sexual objects and are being oppressed, looked down upon and used many a times because transgender people were criminalized for a long time. Political exclusions also can be seen. Right from 1871, the British enacted the Criminal Act, which considered them as people who are into criminal acts. And thus, later on, even the Section 377 of the IPC after independence also uh, looked at hijras as uh, people who could be taken into custody without any reason if they were found to be roaming around and and uh, doing certain things which are not accepted and many a times were harassed by the police. Thus, this takes us to the need to include transgenders and there have been some few positive steps for inclusion. Transgenders are not treated as normal human beings in society. Thus, one of the important points here is about Tamil Nadu which has played a pioneering role in the inclusion strategies as you see, they are called as the Aravan Nigal transgender women have they initiated a welfare board, a revolutionary initiative in the 2008. It is the first of its kind by any state government in India. The social welfare minister plays an important role in this and the board tries to address various concerns of transgender people that includes education, income generation and other social security measures. The second point is the contemporary historic move in India to fortify transgenders. The Supreme Court of India on 15th April 2014 granted legal recognition to transgenders as third genders and mandated of social justice. And this has been one of the great important steps to ensure that the economically, the socially and the economically backward class are been given special rights and privileges. And lastly, we see uh, a view on the Arwani festival at the Kowangam is a village in the Uludurupatyai Taluk in the Velipuram district of Tamil Nadu. It is famous for its annual festivals of transgenders and transversite individuals which taken 15 days in Tamil Nadu in the month of Chitrai, April, May. The festival takes place at the Kudamwar temple and is dedicated to the Arwan. Here you will see almost 1 lakh transgender people who come and they take part in this based on the traditional rituals that they undertake and it's a part of forming a solidarity and these are some of the positive steps towards the inclusion of transgender that we will see. Thus, to conclude, we see that the transgender face multiple problems and are faced uh, by very sorts of problems in society. Some actions require immediate implementation such as introducing the hijra specific social welfare schemes that we've seen like in Tamil Nadu. Some actions need to be taken time on a long term basis changing the negative attitude of general public and increasing accurate knowledge about hijra communities. The required changes need to be reflected in policies and laws, attitude of the government, general public, healthcare providers, healthcare systems and practice. The Hijra's transgender women require understanding and support of the government, healthcare professionals, general public as well as the family members. There is also a need to understand and accept them as humans who are diverse. People have the right to be what they are and what they want to be. For transgender people, the same holds true. I leave you with some important references that you could go through. And I would say a big thank you especially to UGC, HRTC, Gujarat University, Ahmedabad for this online refresher course in social sciences. Thank you so much.